and welcome back to my channel Michelle Gay science teacher in today's video we're going to continue talking about the scientific method in my last video on the scientific method I talked about the parts of the scientific method that you can use we talked about the question what do you want to learn about the hypothesis your educated guess on your question. Then we talked about the experiment, designing an experiment, and next, collecting your data after you do the testing. Once you collect the data, then you have your conclusion. Your conclusion is analyzing your data and comparing it to your hypothesis to see if it was correct or not. Today, today we're going to include observations. Observations are important in conducting a science experiment. You need to be able to observe the materials that you have. You need to be able to observe doing the experiment and you need to make observations before you even conduct the experiment or come up with the hypothesis. Scientists always makes observations and that's when they develop their question. Today, we're going to make an observation of the penny because our test today is called the penny drop. Are you an observer? Do you know that when crime scenes occur, they send out crime scene investigators? They have to have excellent observation skills. That is because when they go on that crime scene and they're collecting information, they have to collect everything to help solve the problem and not leave anything out. I love observation. Do you notice things around you when they're missing? Are you observant when you're going from place to place and notice all the different landmarks? Yes, then you're an observer. The other component we're going to add today is research. Get some background knowledge about what you want to learn about. Other scientists have already solved some of the problems that you're thinking about. And so you don't have to solve those problems. You can research and see what someone else found out and use it to help you develop a better hypothesis before you design your experiment. So, we're going to begin first with observation. For today's experiment called the penny drop, you will need paper towel, water, a pipette or dropper, magnifying lens, pennies, a tray, and water. First, I want you to get your penny and I want you to just look at your penny in detail. Make observations, making a mental note of everything you see. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do this. Now, put your penny down and take a paper and pencil and draw the penny and add as many details as you remember. Now get that same penny again, and I want you to observe it carefully, but this time I want you to use your magnifying lens and really look at the details of everything on the penny. Take your time, I'll give you a minute this time to look and observe your penny. Now, draw that penny again. You can draw either side that you would like and add as many details as possible and then compare it to the penny itself. You will notice how much you observed 
or picked up more details the second time you did this. Did you notice the date? Did you notice the inscriptions on the penny? Did you notice the pictures on the penny? Did you notice what the words actually said on the penny? These are the details that you should have observed. Even if you did not remember them, you did observe them. So observing the penny for this particular experiment is important because it will help you write your hypothesis out. Next, we're going to look at research. We're going to research the penny. During research, we're going to get some background information on the penny. We need to learn how the penny was made. What is it made of? This will help us also in determining our hypothesis. Have students go on the website, the U.S. States Mint, and they can read information about the penny. When it talks about the circulating coin, um, it'll show uh, different pennies that they can look at and see how they have changed over the years because the penny that they will use will not be a penny that's uh, necessarily 20,020. It could be a 1961 penny. And uh, after they've made their observations, they will also see uh, what the inscriptions say on the penny. Also, if you have time, you can have them click for kids and scroll down and go to coins and uh, gather more information about uh, different coins and the coin composition, what it's made of. Uh, if you look here, it tells about the penny, what it's made of, the weight and the thickness. And this helps them in determining uh, their hypothesis. The question for this experiment is, how many drops of water will a penny hold before it all splatters off? Think about that and now write your hypothesis. I think the penny will hold drops of water before splattering off. Now that you've written your hypothesis, now we're going to test to see how many drops of water the penny will actually hold. You're going to do this test three separate times and then you're going to get the average of the three and to determine if your hypothesis is correct or not. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to stop here. I want you to notice the drops of water. I have five drops of water and I still have room for more. Do you want to rethink your hypothesis? If so, make a change now before you continue. This will be the last time or the only time that you can change your hypothesis based on what I've done so far. Once you complete your hypothesis, I want you to complete the test three times. You have completed your test, analyze your data, now write your conclusion. Was your hypothesis correct? Why or not, why not? And explain. I'm going to show you a data collection sheet that I use with my students and I will leave a link in the description box that you can uh, use also. I use this form for the Penny Drop Lab. After students make their observations, then I give them this form where they um, look at the question, 
how many drops of water will a penny hold, and then they write their hypothesis by just filling in the blank. Materials are listed, and it includes a data chart for them to complete uh, as they're doing the investigation. I usually do three trials uh, with my students, but if you have older students, you can do uh, five trials, and at the end, you want them to get their average. The average is what uh, you want them to compare their hypothesis to. After that, they have a data analysis. They have three questions that they can uh, answer or discuss in their group, and then their conclusion. I will leave this form in the description below so that you can use this with your students. This is another experiment that you can conduct at the beginning of the year in teaching the scientific methods so students can understand the components of science experiments. They can explore, they can observe, they can use their inquiry skills, they will use critical thinking skills and reasoning skills. Also, they will use math in this particular investigation. If you have students, younger students, and uh, you feel that you know they can't find the averages, then you can have them do one test. That would be fine with a group of you know first graders, second graders, third grade. You can show them how to get the average, give them a calculator, and walk them through the process. My students love this experiment, um, and I think your students will love it also. Just make sure that uh, they continue to put those drops on the penny until the water completely splatters off the penny. This particular lesson may take two days instead of one because of the time frame. So you may want to break it apart and do the observation, research, and hypothesis one day, and then the next day, conduct the actual experiment and write the conclusion and have your students report. I hope you enjoyed this video today and gleaned some new information about the scientific method that you can use with your children at home or your students at school. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? If not, what are you waiting for? I would love for you to be part of my science family. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. See you in the next video.